voting for a band who, for legal reasons, shall remain nameless. Rude, crude, entitled, dismissive, he then falls to the ground and spins in circles all the while playing this kick-ass guitar solo. I'll be honest, the pressure was on. Three, two, one. I didn't even listen to music until I was 14, which was when I started playing guitar. This is not an exaggeration. My exposure to music was limited broadly to the soundtrack of the 1960s period drama Heartbeat and what GWRFM were playing on the radio in the mornings, which was, by and large, the same four terrible pop songs over and over again. Playing guitar opened a whole new world of sonic entertainment to me. I suddenly found out that my dad possessed dozens of CDs and vinyl records of strange, enticing artists, such as Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin and Yes. It turns out he used to have insanely long hair, and even roadied for Tangerine Dream, Mott the Hoople and Steve Hillage. Wait a minute, was my dad... cool? My dad taught me an important lesson, which was corroborated by others that I've spoken to in the industry. Rule one on tour is, always look after your roadies. Whether they are part of your personal entourage, or working at the venue at which you are performing, always look after your roadies. It bears repeating, always look after your roadies. What happens if you don't? I'm glad you asked! Forty-something years ago, whilst at uni, my dad was roading for a band who, for legal reasons, shall remain nameless. He wasn't their biggest fan, but he was looking forward to watching them perform, as they'd been blowing up at the time and had gained a respectable, if comparatively modest, following. Let's call them the Redactyls. As a guy in charge of events at the Students' Union, my dad was first to greet the band as they walked in. Hand outstretched, smile on face, Fellow roadies keeping pace behind him, ready to get this gig underway. Apparently, the lead singer was the biggest of assholes he'd ever met. I'm talking rude, crude, entitled, dismissive, impatient, unappreciative, and worst of all, treated the roadies like peasants. Demanding and haranguing them to get the job done, they're acting like the entitled rock star divas we've all heard of and hope never to meet. They say never meet your heroes, and it's just as well that none of these guys were any of them. The roadies did their jobs, they unloaded the gear, they set up the stage and plugged everyone in. At the end of the night at 3am, they tore down, tidied the performance hall, and put the band's equipment back into the van. The rock star divas were gone before morning, eager or impatient to move on to the next gig and the next payday. Here's the twist. Remember rule one. If you don't look after your roadies, you will pay the twat tax. And the redactors were in the upper bracket. In what form did the tax levy? Let's just say that the Students' Union was a few pieces of equipment richer by the end of that night. Steve Hillage, on the other hand, was absolutely lovely. Now that I was into this newfound genre of rock, the next step in the journey of my musical immersion was discovering the television channel Kerrang! Stylized with an exclamation mark because it's edgy. It was my go-to viewing material when I got home from school or college, and it introduced me to more contemporary rock acts such as Enter Shikari, Sum 41, and the consistent visual spectacular that is Linkin Park. That's not to say they ignore the roots of rock and metal. As part of its regular programming, pre-recorded live concerts were shown, and one such evening featured ACDC performing in 2009 at the River Plate. Tremendous show, this cannot be understated. Halfway through Let There Be Rock, Angus Young runs onto the stage at the end of the catwalk, which raises up into the air. He then falls to the ground and spins in circles all the while playing this kick-ass guitar solo, without dropping a note. Yeah! In the words of high-functioning sociopathic womanizer Barney Simpson, Le Gen, wait for it, Derry! As you would expect to find in the most rock and roll scenarios and anecdotes, my mother was watching this concert with me. Heaviest thing she's ever listened to is Gary Moore, the next heaviest is Busted. Realising that she was sat next to me watching an ACDC concert with more devil horns and a Satanist picnic was welcome, but unexpected. It was just after we saw Angus Young stand back up and shoot like a firework back to the main stage that my mum, completely unprompted, said to me, Well, if you were that successful, I'd have no choice but to be proud of you. Of all the things to hear from your mother, being told you have to be as successful as ACDC is a particularly strange one. That's something of a high barrier of success. I'll be honest, the pressure was on. I have one more fun fact for you, but first, welcome to my YouTube channel! Here is my attempt at becoming at least as successful as ACDC. Hi Mum! Here you'll find original music, covers, story times, video essays and comedy sketches, all related to my life as a British West Country blues and rock musician. Click here for a story about how I started my first band, with people who couldn't even play an instrument. The fun final fact? The first person to appear on the cover of the first edition of Kerrang's magazine in 1981 was Angus Young of ACDC. Nearly 30 years later, his band was the first live concert I watched on Kerrang TV. I didn't say it was an amazing fact, but we've all got to start somewhere, just like I did in my first band.